Thanks everybody for joining. We're going to um, talk about uh, the data center modular hardware system uh, specification updates today. And uh, I'm Rob Nance with Jabel. Uh, Paul Artman with AMD is co-presenting with me. So as most of you probably know, um, the DCMHS uh, is a group of specifications that define the the major building blocks necessary to put together modular servers. We've got um, most of the, the members that you see down below at this point have created systems using these specifications. Uh, we at Jable have a, a one that's actually in production already. But we've been pretty happy with the, the variety of systems that have been created. You can see on the side over here, we've, we've got short depth edge systems, enterprise, OCP, uh, hyperscale systems. So a good variety of, of system types have been created. Um, but we are continuing to work on the specifications and try to broaden the scope. So what we're talking about today is a few uh, new things that we're working on to add to these specifications. As you can see in the middle there, um, we've, the systems that have been created so far were created with the two main uh, board types, uh, motherboard types, the HPM of uh, MDNO and MFLW, so that stands for density optimized and full width. We're adding another classification uh, called scalable DNO, so we'll talk about that today, the MSDNO specification. And then uh, a couple of others on the left-hand side over here, we're, uh, we're adding a shared infrastructure, or MSIF, uh, specification to describe how to put together multi-node systems with, this, with these building blocks. And finally, uh, plug and play. So MPNP is defining, we're, we're working towards defining the interoperability, the interfaces and how things need to be interoperable uh, between vendors so you can put together systems with uh, multi-vendor building blocks and everything, eventually at least, everything will work together in a plug and play fashion. And this is just another way to view the, the specifications, just to, it, it, it lets me show some leverage specifications a little easier. If you see on the right hand side of the slide over here, there's a couple of, of specifications that are key to DCMHS but are not under the umbrella of MHS, and that is the DCSCM, which is our pluggable management module, and the OCP NIC, the OCP MES card. So both of those um, are operating under their own work stream in OCP, but we do leverage those into the MHS platforms um, as key building blocks. And uh, on the bottom here, we just have a timeline of kind of where we're at with the specifications. They were first created, the 1.0 version of the baseline specs were created in early 2023. It's no accident that on the uh, far side over here, we're calling out Q3 of 2024 because that's the target. We're targeting uh, the OCP Global Summit for having um, the 1.0 uh, versions of the specs we're talking about today. All right. And so uh, it kind of, I'll start a little history on that DNO. Um, we had a, a type one, two, and three uh, initially with, it was focused around 19 inch rack. Uh, and then we went to a, a newer spec and started adding stuff around 21 inch and it got confusing. So I'll go through that in the next slide. But basically the Dino is a, a modular uh, infrastructure. Uh, what we're showing here is for Meta. Meta actually be, is using that as is. So they can quickly get a board from AMD, from Intel, test it in an interposer and plug it in their chassis. So it gives them a lot of flexibility, flexibility by having known interfaces, known connectors. So for them, it's easy to just really evaluate something quickly uh, and, and very fast to scale into production. I'll talk about the types a little bit. Uh, initially, the, the, the target of DCMHS was 19 inch racks. And, and that was what we initially came out with. And we had something called type one, type two, type three, and type four. Uh, but then type one got killed and type three got killed and then we started adding type five, six, and seven, and eight. And it got really confusing. So we, we decided to, to, to change the nomenclature and add a little of flexibility at it. So class A is a 210 millimeter wide. It's designed to have two loads in a 19 inch. A class B is 250 millimeters wide, designed to have two loads in a 21 inch. Class C is going to be the full width of a 19 inch. And then class D is the full width of a 21 inch. Um, and a 
as we were looking at the, the backbowl width were pretty easy to close on because it, it's just what fits in a 19 width to 21 inch. But we had a little bit harder time is what's the right depth. And so there was a lot of tension around 305 versus 335 and see what we could fit a feature set. Uh, and then, you know, as we started looking at, those are all about a, a single uh, non shadow process or we call strike force at times. And then once we go to a, a shadow design, how deep do we need to go? So what we did is we're going to define the widths. We're going to have some recommended default length ranges on length, but actually the length could be anything. So it just gives a lot of flexibility. And the goal is really to be able to leverage this across multiple platforms. Uh, what, what we've seen since the spec came out is we've seen a lot of what we originally called a, a type two, but a class A, and a lot of FLW. So we're seeing the industry adopt the spec pretty strongly. And this just gives more flexibility in terms of how we grow it forward. Kind of gets more details into how, how we fit. Uh, uh, half live would fit easily into a 19 inch rack. Um, the, you can put two of those in there. Um, for the, and then the class B, you can put two of those in a 21 inch. We're seeing that class B really interesting for height scales because we can put two of those in into a 21 inch. And it's also interesting for 19 inch because you can put one of those in there into a nice size in terms of uh, panel size. Uh, class D is where we go for the 21 inch full wide, so it's a big board. And Class C is kind of placeholder. Class C looks a lot like FLW, it's a 19 inch full width. We haven't seen a lot of support to beat that yet, but we want to leave the flexibility so you can do a Class C or an FLW where I have to plug power supplies in there. But the, most of the attention really has been around, I'd say Class B and D is probably the, the highest level interest right now, uh, just in terms of getting the feature set as, as, we, as we go forward. Uh, and what you'll tend to see is we're adding more memory channels and we're getting bigger sockets. And all things are pushing to this wider board. Back to Rob. Feel free to ask any questions as it comes up. Okay, uh, yeah, for plug and play, I wanted to spend some time on this. We, you know, we at Jable, we, as I mentioned before, we have a, a system that's in production and um, we've started to do some interoperability work with that platform. We did, dem we demonstrated at the uh, OCP Global Summit last year that we successfully integrated a, um, an ASB designed DCSEM into our, into our system. So we have a Jable designed DCSEM. The system can also operate with uh, an A-speed designed uh, DCSEM. We, this was kind of, uh, you know, as you look across here, the, the base specs were 1.0 or 1.x. We've, we've been talking about plug and code as the way to, to achieve interoperability. That's really what we had to do with, uh, that was kind of our phase two approach here. That's what we had to do on the Jable side. It was really some co-design effort. This wasn't, terribly difficult or didn't take a long time. I think we worked about six weeks on this, but it did take Jable, AMI, and A-Speed working together, engineers in the lab, in the same lab working together for three to four weeks pretty intensively to, to get this up and running. So that's kind of what we call plug and code. It's a fair amount of work, um, not terribly difficult, but it does require tight integration and tight um, uh, synchronization between the companies. What we're working toward is is to eventually get to the baseline, but we have a phase 2.5 where we're, talk, we're calling it plug and play light. So we're starting to work on now the, the power, power on uh, boot and discovery of modules in the system. We're starting to work on how that's going to uh, be facilitated with the interfaces that we have. And the, and the goal is eventually to get to this, this baseline plug and play spec where you can put together a system with multiple vendors building blocks and the system will just work. We will be able to discover all of the various systems, what's in the, what's in the system uh, and uh, load the appropriate firmware BIOS and all of, the, uh, all of that code that makes the system work and the system will boot. So that's kind of our long-term goal that we're, we're shooting for, but we're taking some steps to get there along the way. Um, so other than plug and play, there are a couple of new things that we're, that we're starting to work on. One is 48 volt power distribution. We have been 12 volt power distribution up until this point. Um, we're now starting to do some work on 48 volt power distribution. The 48 volt uh, sub team is doing um, a lot of work with the HPM team, uh, work stream. 
just to make sure that we that we have any implications or uh, that we've thought through everything on the HPM side uh, for implications there, and that we're we're doing that. Um, we're adding 48 to the to the support, um, and we know how it's going to impact the HPM designs if it does. And then finally, MSIF, that's the shared infrastructure. Uh, uh, Todd, uh, Paul, and I are going to be talking about that uh, in the next uh, session here. So stay around for that. We'll give some more details. But essentially, the shared infrastructure, we're just trying to focus on the interoperability and the interfaces. We're not trying to define the chassis or, um, or the cooling and power, any of that kind of stuff. We're, we're mainly focusing on what, what does it take to be interoperable between multiple nodes and the shared, uh, shared infrastructure that will be in that system, whether that's I.O. or, or whatever that might be, right? Uh, fans, cooling, and all that stuff. How, how is the interoperability going to work? What interfaces are used and what protocols are used over those interfaces? We'll give some more detail on that one in the next talk. And so, yeah, the call to action here, we have a lot of stuff posted on the OCP website, so um, anyone can go download these specs and read through them. Uh, we have a wiki out there as well, uh, a lot of training material. Um, so we encourage everyone to go, um, to go out to the OCP website, download this, contact any of us, um, any of us that are in OCP or in uh, DCMHS, feel free to contact us with any questions you have. Yeah, you know, one thing I was going to add is uh, in terms of DCMHS, Jable has done DCMHS designs for Intel, AMD. We're seeing uh, customers go to DCMHS on SP5, which are uh, shipping silicon, and all our uh, next generation silicon will have all the reference designs will be DCMHS. So we're seeing this really be a tipping point where a lot of the customers are going to move this as kind of a reference design. It makes it consumable. I can take an Ampere design, an Intel design, an AIM design, put it in the same box with a little bit, with very minor changes to cabling and other things. So we are seeing a lot of momentum here. Yeah, good point. So yeah, any, uh, any questions? If not, we can jump into our next one. We're a little bit ahead. Uh -huh. OK. Thanks.